We know the word faith is super important to Christianity, but what does it actually mean? I think for a lot of us, we have a misunderstanding of this idea of faith and how does it actually work? So let's talk about it. Eric, when we have students on campus, we spend the first week diving into a lot of the terms we're actually walking through in this series. One of the first ones we deal with is faith. Explain why. Faith is sort of like a linchpin to the entire construct of Christianity. You pull it out, the whole operation, it's like the whole mechanics of the system of Christianity just crumbles into a whole bunch of pieces. Faith is what brings it all together. It is a form of glue, if you will. It is that which adheres us to the living God and adheres him to us. It is a connective piece that brings all other pieces in our doctrine and our theology into a working place and a working order. In Hebrews 11.6, the writer of Hebrews says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. And so- By the way, what's the word impossible mean? Uh, if I was going to sound like Nathan, I'd say, and by the way, uh, it, you know, I was looking up the word impossible, and it's going to surprise you to find out that the word impossible means in the Greek, impossible. That's good. That, that sounds sound, powerful. Does that sound like yeah, you? that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so it is central. It is at the very fabric level, at the very uh, cornerstone level of what makes Christianity function. So what we do when we have a discipleship process that we're beginning is we begin with the most central concepts. Scripture, what is it? Faith, what is it? Grace, what is it? The Holy Spirit, who is he? <laughs> because this is how Christianity functions, and this is where the enemy hits. The enemy wants to cause you to question Scripture. Is that really God's word, or is that just some wise men that wrote that down? Grace is in the Holy Spirit, two topics that we talked about in the previous these are major attack points, and they're deranged. For many people, they don't even want to talk about it in, in the church because they've only seen this weird, perverted version of it. That's very purposeful on the part of the enemy. And faith is another one. I grew up with a weird, wonky notion of faith. And it's not that my parents were teaching it to me. It was that it was around. I was in this time period called the faith movement. It was a very prominent thing in Christianity, and it just sort of had its fingers in everything. It had it in the music. It had it in a lot of the teachings that were going around. Uh, and it made faith sound like the power of just positive thinking. Like if you want a Ferrari, you just need to have faith for it. You need to believe, sort of material, materialize the idea of a Ferrari in your mind and it will be real in your physical life. It's like, that is absolute nonsense. And yet it crept into the church and still to this day holds a certain sway over people's understanding. That's so good. <clears throat> uh, just to go back to what you said at the very beginning, it is amazing how if we don't understand the idea of faith, actually Christianity doesn't work because we are saved by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. we, we function every moment of the day through faith. It's mm -hmm. <clears throat> I often tie it to this idea of dependency, that, that we were created to be dependent, right? We're, we're branches that abide in a vine. And the only way we can do that, uh, the only way we can uh, live in this state of surrender, dependency, abiding, is it's actually through faith. It's, it's the very heart uh, of dependency. When, when you're teaching through faith, uh, with our students, one of the ways you talk about it is you, you look at the Greek word. You want to flesh uh -huh. that out because I think for a lot of people, understanding how we translate faith mm -hmm. and this other word mm -hmm. actually begins to bring clarity to our mm -hmm. understanding of what faith actually is. Yeah, I, we don't want to you know, make us overly complex. Uh, we don't have a keynote screen that we're going to be putting up, but you know, the base word for, uh, or the root word for faith is pistis. And that's a, a noun, and it translates as faith. It's a good translation. And then when you put that noun into an action mode, and when it goes to work, when it is doing something, it is pistuyo. And so it's it flows out of this word pistis. But when we translate it, we translate the first one as faith, and then pistuyo we translate it as believe. And it makes it sound like it's a completely different concept, when in actuality, it is the action of faith. So if you have faith, it's because you are pastuyoing, if you will. And it's a doing, it is an action. And so much of what the enemy wants to distract us from in regards to this word is this idea of believing and knowing how to do it. You have some 
I think you have my favorite illustration. I don't like to give you credit for my favorite illustration because I'd like to think that I would have my, my favorite <laughs> illustration. But your parachute illustration <laughs> makes me laugh and it is so good. So I, I'm going to ask you, uh, can you give the parachute illustration? Uh, sure, I'll be, I'll be happy to. It, it actually came out, just to give some context, uh, it's from the book of John because John uses that term, believe or faith, a hundred times. It's actually more than the rest of the New Testament put together. And it's amazing how he says, even the reason I'm writing the book of John is so that you would believe, right? That, that you believe that Jesus Christ is who he is, and that by believing in him, you would have life in his name. <clears throat> and it's interesting as you begin to look at that, the thing I had to wrestle with is, well, yeah, but I can believe in my mind, but that's not what John is talking about. And there was, it's not a mental ascent. It's not like a uh, an affirmation or a mental agreement. A true with false something. test. Yeah, right. it's it's actually an action, as you were saying. So you can actually believe something mentally and still not do this word. So when it says that we're to believe on Jesus Christ or we're to put our faith in Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean like, oh yes, I had this mental image, and because the demons have knowledge, the demons have an understanding, but they are not saved. So I was trying to come up with an illustration and I, the <laughs> became a parachute. So the idea was, okay, here, here, I take you up. Uh, we're going to go skydiving. Oh, how fun. And so I think it's fun. Uh, we're, so I take him in an airplane um, and I, you don't know we're skydiving, but I take you up on this airplane <laughs> and I pull up on the side door. And I'm like, look at this view. Isn't this amazing? And so you go to the side door and you're looking you're like, oh, this is so cool. And I come up behind you and I just go, poof. And so, I can't believe you just shoved me out. Out of love. Uh, <clears throat> it's to prove this lesson. And so you're following, following. And I grab a parachute because I figured you need one and I throw it down to you. And as you're falling and here's the parachute, I yell down to you, do you believe in the parachute? <laughs> and you realize if you look up at the parachute and have mental ascent yeah. that there's, there's no salvation in that. Yeah. So you can say, yeah, I believe in the parachute, but you will, you will die. <laughs> so what I usually tell our students is you have to make your way over to the parachute, which are, are you gonna? Yeah, you I need to do it. I shouldn't do it. But you, you... <laughs> <laughs> the, the poor audio people, uh, the poor visual people, actually, <laughs> the people watching the video. <clears throat> but you, but you make your way over to the parachute somehow, and you, how, how are you going to believe in the parachute? Well, you believe in the parachute by actually grabbing the parachute, you strap it on, and if I was falling, I would be holding onto that parachute with every fiber of my yeah. being because it is my sole means of salvation. It is my only hope if I'm going to get out of this. That's actually how John uses the word believe. Hmm. Now, he didn't, he didn't know about a parachute, but that's the concept. And it's such a, I think it's such a great illustration because if I'm actually going to believe Jesus, if I'm going to put my faith in Christ, it's not just a, yes, I believe in the word and you know I, I wrote it on my bathroom mirror, or I put the little statement on my refrigerator, or I put in a doily or whatever it is that people do. <laughs> that it's not just <laughs> esteeming God's word, it's, it's actually putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he becomes that garment of salvation and then I cling to it with every fiber of my being because otherwise I have no hope. Uh, if I don't have that parachute on, I, I will be destroyed. Hmm. And so when we're talking about faith and belief, it's again. It's, it has to move beyond just head knowledge and, and information, and it has to be something that we actually live with. We have to put it on, mm -hmm. which means if I'm facing temptation today, and I'm going to have faith in Christ, if I'm going to believe Jesus and His Word that He is my victory, it doesn't just mean like, okay, I know I can have victory, and then I fall into it. It's what would it mean practically? What do I need to do in this moment to cling to Jesus so that that victory is actually realized? The victory has been purchased. I need to I need to grab a hold of it and and walk in obedience to that so it becomes reality in my life. I, I gave a sermon a couple of weeks ago called "The Athlete," which and, I loved. It's actually it oh, ranks in my one of my favorite God. sermons by you. Uh, afterwards, uh, this guy came up to me and he said there was a study done that you can measure someone's overall fitness and health by the strength of their grip. And that if they have a weak grip, it usually means they are weak, you know, in every other facet of their physical body. And I was saying that is so profound spiritually. And I think he knew that. That's probably why he was sharing it with me. But so profound to think that our the overall health of our life is defined by this grip. Well, faith is a grip, just like you were saying in regards to the parachute. 
are you holding on to this as if it is truly your life? Or are you just esteeming it from a distance going, you know, that is nice and I, I esteem its value. Well, if you esteemed its value, you would cling to it. If you had, if I handed you, you know, 10 jewels and I said, these are worth $10 million and hold on to them. Well, if you truly believe that they had that worth and that value, you would know all throughout the day, every moment where they were, you would be very cognizant of your hold on them. And you would check multiple times to make sure they really are there. It would be a very serious thing to you. I think pra a more practical illustration, because you've never given me jewels. <laughs> uh, when, when Too I, far I, fetched. Yeah, it is crazy in my mind. <laughs> but when, when I take groups over to Israel, uh, the passport, uh, oh, yeah. I, I have to have my passport and I have all the tip money for the entire trip for all the places we go to. And it's amazing. I have it on me. Do you know how many times I check that throughout the yeah. day? Because I'm like, I need, I need my, if I don't have my passport, I'm not leaving. Yeah. Right. If I, if I lose this money, I'm in trouble. And it's amazing how, when you, when you treasure yeah. and you understand the value of something, how oftentimes yeah. you're, you're just like, I just want to check. Okay. I'm yeah. good. That's and right. It, I have it. I'm good. So there was these Moody science videos and I can't remember the guy's name. I know his last name was Moon and there's a whole bunch of people out here that are like yelling his first name at me, but I always want to say like Wilbur or Vernon or something like that. So I'm just going to call him Dr. Moon. Great videos. And so you'd, you'd wonder how well I watch these videos if I can't remember the guy's name, but he had an illustration of a chair and he says, faith is not just knowing that there's a chair. It's not just knowing and believing the chair could hold you up. It's sitting in the chair. And so faith is the presence of an action, which is called believing or to believe in our language. And that is to sit in it and trust that that chair was constructed to actually do a job for you, to hold you up. Bruce Olson was a missionary to, uh, I want to say Columbia. Is that where he went down to? There's a book called Bruchko. And he's working with this native uh, tribal people called the Modalone Indians. And they don't have a word in their dialect, in their language for faith. Well, that's challenging when you're a missionary and you're trying to articulate, believe in Jesus Christ. And so they all lived in a common house, which is very strange, but they hung like hammocks from like the rafters, at least my mental picture of it. And so his illustration is, he says it, to come to Jesus and to believe in Jesus or to have faith in Jesus is like untying your hammock from the rafters in the longhouse and tying him into Jesus and then laying down in the hammock and trusting that he will hold you up. I was like, oh, that's good. That's really good. You and I, the reason I like your parachute illustration is because it says something that's very hard for us as teachers, us as pastors to articulate. For whatever reason, faith is a challenging idea to pass along, and which is why the enemy is working overtime to confuse the issue, which is why we're having this episode, is to say, let's make sure that we as the body of Christ are clear on the importance of the word faith and how it actually functions, what it is mechanically in our life. That's so good. <clears throat> I think just even just to wrap up, one of the definitions that really helped me begin to understand this idea of faith back in the day <clears throat> is he described it as it's invoking the activity of a second party, which is abstract. It really makes not a lot of sense. But if I'm the first party and I come to the situation, I hear, here's this temptation, uh, here's the neighbor I'm supposed to love, uh, here's this gospel that I'm supposed to declare, I recognize that I cannot do this. So what do I do? I actually turn my gaze heavenward and say, God, I can't, you can. And as we talked about in the, the last episode about grace, would you somehow come and enable me to somehow pull this off? And I begin to rest. Now, I'm fully involved. I'm, I'm still participating. But I'm leaning upon his strength. I'm resting upon his provision. I'm I'm holding tight to his victory. And as I begin to rest and depend and allow his grace to move in my life, as I hold tight to that reality, I actually begin to walk by faith. Hmm. And this is so strong in scripture that ironically or oddly or profoundly, we as Christians are called believers. <laughs> like this is so <laughs> central to our faith which is, I didn't, she used a different word than faith, but this is so central to Christianity that we are people of faith, yeah. that we are people who believe, that we are the believers. We are the one ones who hold tight to yeah. the reality of, of God and his word. 
which should then radically change the world around because us. Because we could be called the lovers, and that would be accurate with scripture. We could be called the rejoicers, the leapers. We could be called the peacers, and it's, that's a weird one. I don't think that one, that one translates well. But we're called the believers. It is the chief action that unlocks the other action. And you could say, well, aren't we known by our love? Yeah, but you're not gonna have any love unless you believe. You will know those that believe because they love but they cannot love unless they believe. And so believe is the starter package. It's the genesis point of a new beginning. This is super good. Well, in the next episode, we're gonna keep unpacking some of these terms, which one of them happens to be love, because oh. uh, even that one is quite misunderstood. Uh, but until then, just encouraging everyone to grab a hold of Jesus Christ and actually be a believer in the days in which we live. Amen.